So we'll take a brief look at uh, general categorical notion of what we just constructed. Okay, that free product is a categorical co-product or direct sum. Uh, both cases, what we have is X alpha, both in the case of products and sums, we have the following. Of course, we have X alpha, alpha in a objects in some category, uh, see. Okay, so first let's look at a product which is a little bit more natural in the sense, natural to construct. So product is an object, product alpha in a uh, x alpha, this is simply notation, together with morphisms which are projections. So you can think of the product of sets, you can project onto each coordinate. So we have X alpha, product of topological spaces, vector spaces, groups, all of them have morphisms, okay, such that we have a universal property given, let's say, an object Y, object, and morphisms to each of these Xi's. So morphisms, whichever way it is, we will call them uh, phi. So phi alpha mapping Y to X alpha. Uh, there exists a unique morphism well, let's call it again capital Phi, mapping Y to the product X alpha, such that some appropriate di diagram commutes, namely if I have Y, then I can go into uh, by Phi to uh, the product, alpha in A of X alpha, okay. and then I project it to al X alpha, and I have the map Phi alpha. Okay, so if I look at the map into the product and then I project, we get X alpha. Now in almost all cases we are used to seeing you have products of vector spaces, groups, topological spaces, sets and so on. And in most cases the underlying set, all the cases I've mentioned, the underlying set is simply the product of sets. Projection map is the projection map. In the algebraic situations like vector spaces and groups and so on, the algebraic structure is the obvious component wise structure. But in topology, we have the slightly more complicated product topology. So if you have not seen this before, this will tell you why the product topology is defined in that way rather than the box topology or any other things. It's the categorical uh, product. Okay, for topological spaces and groups, groups, this is particularly simple. Okay, vector spaces, it's uh, simple. And topological spaces, only the topology is a bit complicated. Okay, but what we have, if we dualize this, we look at the co-product, which includes the free product, then things are more interesting and they become different in different cases. In particular, as far as the sets are concerned, the thing is, uh, if you have a set with a structure, you don't just get the same set uh, operation. Namely, now let's just look at our co-product. It's almost the same as above. Only all arrows get reversed, by the way. That's why it's called co in category theory. Okay, so we again have X alpha. So co-product is an object which can be variously denoted as direct sum, alpha in A, which will be the direct sum of vector spaces which in the case category of vector spaces, which uh, let me remind you is given, uh, is finite linear combinations of elements in the various X alphas. So any given vector will involve only finitely many of them, even though the sum is uh, over a possibly infinite or uncountable collection. Okay, so this is not denoted this way or sometimes it's denoted in often it's denoted this way, standing for upside down product sign, co-product sign, okay. Let me use the first, uh, sec second notation. And we have inclusion maps from X alpha into the uh, product, co-product, alpha in A, X alpha, okay. Such that now we have already se seen this given an object Y and morphisms. Last time there were morphisms from Y, this time there are morphisms to Y, X alpha to Y, let's call them again phi alpha. Okay. There exists a unique morphism, capital phi, 
this time its domain is going to be the coproduct as I called it coproduct above yes consists alpha x alpha such that for all alpha in a the diagram commutes the appropriate diagram commutes namely that if I have any x alpha and I map it into the product alpha in a of x okay so and then I have y here I have i alpha okay and this uh, uh, so that's not i alpha those are phi alphas are given morphisms these are the inclusion maps and this commutes phi okay now just to emphasize how this is the other one upside down let's look in purple so in in the previous case we had maps which were called phi alpha but they were in this direction and instead of having a product we had the coproduct here alpha in a and instead of having maps i alpha we had p alpha which were projections which went in the opposite direction and in that case we had phi going from y to the product well not to the coproduct to the product sitting there so all arrows are systematically reversed in the data and in the conclusion so objects are objects of course so instead of i alpha we have p alpha uh, all are dramatis personae are in this di diagram so as you see really all arrows are reversed that's why it's called the coproduct okay so the coproduct uh, as with any universal property you can just make a definition you can prove uniqueness which incidentally we did not prove for the uh, free products though we proved it for free groups uh, the general nonsense proof of uniqueness so so remark here is that products and coproducts are unique if they exist yeah, so they need not exist but they are unique if they exist and the proof is the usual drill for example with coproducts if I had two different coproducts I would get morphisms from one to the other using the universal property of the first one and thinking of the inclusions into the second one as just morphisms then flip the role you would get a morphism the other way you compose them you get morphisms from any of the candidates to themselves and identities give you other candidates uniqueness will tell you compositions are identities I haven't written anything down but this is following the standard product same with patterns so if coproducts exist they're unique including our free products and uh, products of the exist are unique but coproducts are a little bit different in nature if I took topological spaces the coproducts are disjoint unions okay if I took groups you saw it's a somewhat complicated object called free groups I already mentioned what is uh, what it is for a vector spaces it's going to be the finite linear combinations of elements in that okay while product is arbitrary uh, terms okay so one reason why the distinction is not so clear is the first categorical structure most people see will be vector spaces at this level and the product and co-product for finite ones coincide with each other because of the coefficients here okay but otherwise they're different well what about based spaces if I'm looking at based spaces you can see that the co-product is actually the space obtained by gluing together all based points and that will give you a based space it's an interesting exercise so I'll just say it's as an exercise before we leave uh, this abstraction which is the based uh, co-product or direct sum of based topological spaces okay that is all of abstraction for now uh, we will return to our main goal which is to describe and prove the correctness of the description of the co-product uh, for no, of the fundamental group of a union of spaces with appropriate hypothesis okay um, that is the seifert van kampen theorem but specifically describing the kernel of that map phi that we constructed